Hey Eurovision fans, we have the photos from day one of rehearsals at Eurovision 2024. Seven countries from the first half of semi-final one took to the stage and we got to see some of the photos of their performances. There were also some videos released on TikTok which gave us some behind the scenes views as well. We're gonna talk about who looked good, who needs a little bit of work and how this could change who qualifies. So uh, let's kiki. If you're new here, welcome, my name is Tom. I'm an Irish Eurovision analyst and you can find all of this stuff on my Eurovision channel. So first rehearsals started yesterday. They don't let the press watch it anymore because they want to protect the artist, but we do get these photos released. All of these photos are from the EBU, Corinne Cumming and Sarah Louise. So shout out to them because these photos look really, really excellent every year. So we got 10 photos from each country. There was also a TikTok released as well, showing kind of like a behind the scenes. I'm not gonna put the TikToks in this video because I don't even wanna consider dealing with copyright right now I just don't have the time to do that so I'll talk about the TikToks but I'm not going to show them you can just go to the Eurovision TikTok channel and watch it yourself if you want to see the real thing in the flesh. So first up we had Cilia Capsis singing Liar for Cyprus. So this was a kind of a hard one to review because I think this performance is going to be big on the movement. We know that she's an amazing dancer. There's going to be some choreo here. There's a dance break. Obviously photo only just shows off a moment in time of visual things. I don't think we're getting the key information that we want to get from Cyprus. The TikTok video was a little bit more helpful from that. Seeing the choreo. I actually thought the choreo looked pretty cool in the TikTok clip. It looks like it's technical, technically difficult. It doesn't look like a really cliche dancing. They didn't show the dance break, which I think is clever. I think they should save that for the actual show. In terms of the visual aspect, we got some of this kind of like aqua. It looks like almost like wave or haziness. So that looks kind of cool. And we see it again here as well. But really, it doesn't seem like there's a very strong visual theme going throughout this. Like, for example, last year, Cyprus had this fire and water theme, which I thought looked really, really cool. This is maybe a little bit more abstract, maybe a little bit more focus on her and the lighting and the energy and choreography of her and the dancers. We do have this kind of cool image where she's standing and the dancers are almost forming a line. I actually like, really like the lighting in this. So maybe they're gonna try and go for some more kind of concert feel, cool lighting effects. We can see here again, her completely in the dark. So we've got this like silhouette with the backlighting as well. And another image of here of her singing in silhouette. Outfit-wise, I think it looks cool. I wonder, are they gonna try different outfits on the second rehearsal and maybe try different ones? What is she comfortable in? Obviously, she's moving around a lot, so it needs to be super practical. But yeah, it looks very youthful. Kind of give me a little bit of Britney Spears' Baby One More Time vibes. I think the vibe that they're going for is very youthful TikTok trend styling. And we can see in this last picture, the guys are gonna take their tops off and then we have this kind of like red hazy effect as well. So yeah, visually not particularly like stunning or elevating here. But I think the key thing is going to be when we see the clips, when we get those 30 second clips after the second rehearsals, we'll see what all the movement looks like, what kind of camera cut style they're going for. Are they going for something very smooth or choppy or edgy? In regards to the TikTok clip, we have a lot of these reds and aquas again. I like the color palette. Cario looks good. Vocals sound okay, not super wow. Again, this is really difficult to sing. She's moving around a lot, but yeah, she kind of does need to hit those vocals really, really well. I like her poise as well in the intro to the TikTok. She's kind of talking, introducing. She looks very confident. I think she's got a really great maturity for her age. She's got that kind of like star quality in how she talks to the camera. So really, really rooting for her. But yeah, overall, I thought this whole full rehearsal day was quite strong. And maybe this is one of the ones that just wowed me less than others. Okay, next up, it's Teodora representing Serbia singing Ramanda. This looks really mystical, very fantasy, Lord of the Rings. She really looks like Arwen from Lord of the Rings, particularly this like sideburn hair. But I love it, this smoke is fantastic. And the way that the lighting is hitting it, giving these, particularly if you look in this, in the top right corner, this purple, green, blue effect on it is really, really pretty. And these shades of gray and mystery, really building a really cool, really cool world building here. In this picture, you can see the rock looks much more detailed. It's bigger, it's got more layers and levels to it. So really, if they do a lot of close camera cuts, we're totally gonna get brought into this beautiful fantasy world and it's really going to pop and contrast with Cyprus which is very more open in terms of how it's presented it seems with more high energy and big dancing and then we're going to have this very sharp contrast in this darker more solemn craggy rock 
fantasy feel. Styling wise, she's gone for something a little bit more flowy. The top looks like it's got sequins on it. So it looks a tiny bit like chainmail, but then the lower half is more like a flowy dress. So kind of like a little bit of a mix between a fighter and a princess, which I kind of like as well. And the color palette feels a little bit timeless. So it feels like this is something that could have been worn. Obviously, apart from the sequins on the arm, this feels like something that could have been worn 100 years ago. Obviously, this song, it makes references to after World War One. Some of this tableau building is absolutely stunning. This picture here where she's with in the rock towards the side as well as she's also performing it really really well because she's getting into the moment and she's being enveloped by the scenery that's being created and you know it really does help if your set producers have made this incredible scenery for you to sit in it's easier to get into that moment and really really feel what you're singing about so it looks like she's going to be starting off the rock and then she's going to come forward and we have this image of her on the ground so she's going to have a little bit more of a vulnerable moment before we break out into the final chorus and then it looks like she's going to come forward and then we have this lovely lighting as well so i really feel like they're doing a good mood of just kind of cutting out but just making a complete darkness so that audience are kind of in shadows it's kind of like she's this solitary person on her own which again kind of fits with the some of the themes of the song and hopefully we're gonna have lots of close-up camera cuts and this is going to be super immersive this looks really really pretty i like this I love this fantasy feel. You know, Lord of the Rings is one of the best grossing movies ever. I don't think there's any problem whatsoever in having like a small nod to it. It's not like she's gone like full elf. She hasn't got like a bow and arrow or anything like that. <laughs> so, you know, it's just like some small touches that just give it that like really cool fantasy feel. Like this picture here is just absolutely stunning. And you can see even the light on the rocks just gives it a different color and just adds in some extra. And just the smoke work here is just absolutely sublime. These layers that they've created, we've got the front layer of smoke and then this wisps coming up in the back it's just going to get this fantastic mystery so really really looking forward to this i feel a little bit more confident about this i put it as a borderline yes in my prediction video feeling a little bit better about it now obviously we need to see who's coming up later i said before i think that it's important what does ukraine do what does portugal do as well i think portugal's the main one i really do feel like serbia and portugal have such have the biggest overlap with each other so how are they going to contrast I would love both of them to go through. In terms of the TikTok clip, we can see some of the visuals from the, from the music video, that beautiful stormy sea. And then we see at the end that she gets back onto the rock. So I imagine we're gonna have that absolutely stunning image of the Romanda flower coming up at the end. I don't blame them for saving that. That is the real magical moment. They should save that until the end as a surprise. Vocally sounds great. I have no doubt that she's gonna be able to sing this very, very well. Okay, third up we have Sylvester Velt. Oh my God, I got to. <laughs> okay, third up we have Sylvester Belt from Lithuania singing Look Telk. Now this is a slightly hard one to judge because at the end of the day, the staging looks very similar to Eurovisia.lt, the national final. Now, obviously when I first saw that in my Eurovisia reaction video, I thought it looked really, really, really cool. So this is the slightly difficult thing as a Euro fan watching rehearsals is that some countries were seen for the first time, like Cyprus, that's other than the music video is, is the most information we've gotten about staging. Whereas with Sylvester, Belt. Many of the, like the color palette, these blues and reds are very, very similar. It still does look like a little bit of an upgrade. Like this picture is absolutely stunning. These blues, the lighting of him, the way his outfit pops with this lighting is absolutely stunning. And it looks like the LEDs just have a little bit more detail in them. I saw as well on the TikTok that he's got this thing where he's turning his head to and from the camera, which I think looks super, super cool and edgy. They've kept the kick dancing, which I really love as well. Great use of lighting here, the red on red, just giving us this like slightly futuristic dystopian feel, <clears throat> like a movie poster or something. I've seen some people not too keen on the backing dancer styling. I think this looks really avant-garde. I love the red lining on the top of their jackets. And another example of really beautiful lighting here with this blue line. So I imagine this is gonna be somewhere towards the start of the song. I think this does really well at giving this future vibe. I feel like this is future pop. It feels really new, it feels really fresh. The whole thing just gives really slick fashion vibes. Very simple color palette, but it works. This last photo again, working with silhouettes. I think this is gonna look really, really high quality when we see the final thing. And I think the reason that there wasn't a huge excitement about these photos is because we have seen a lot of it before. But keep in mind that people watching semi-final number one and the final will have mostly be seeing this for the first time. So they're gonna have a big impact. This looks absolutely stunning. It's just less impactful because we've seen some of it before, that's all. In terms of the TikTok video, we get to see, for lack of a better, the Kylie Minogue can't get you out of my head bit, which is my favorite part of the song with the kick dancing 
and his head turns towards the camera. That looks wow. That is definitely the wow moment. It's so vibrant and exciting and it looks super, super hyper cool. So yeah, I feel really, really good about this. Now, quick summary about the first three songs because other than 2008 where the golden jury rule saved Croatia, we've never had the first three songs qualify ever. It's usually one song or two songs. More often than not, it's one. Who would I have to put out from the first three? Based off those rehearsal clips, I still feel like Cyprus is the weakest of the three so far. But we're not seeing the camera angles. Obviously, we haven't really seen much with these boxes yet that are at the top, which is like one of the main things about the staging. So that's going to come when we get these like big swooping camera, camera angles. We're getting like basic bitch footage from a phone standing in the crowd. You know, they're saving all the like big Y show parts for later. Next up, we have Bambi Thug singing Doomsday Blue for Ireland. Now, these rehearsal clips caused quite a bit of a story, quite a big reaction. Big change in the makeup. Some people loving it, some people hating it. Some people saying that this looks a little bit like Trixie Mattel because they're trying to make it look good on the big screen. I love this Triskelion, which is a type of Celtic uh, symbol in our like ancient art. And also there's some ohm writing as well, which is a very ancient type of Irish Celtic writing, which we used to have on rocks. I love those little historical nods. The hair here is looking a tiny bit messy, but overall, I really love this styling. I think it's fantastic. This is an absolutely stunning photo. And this is where I think the makeup works for me because it looks like there's some sort of like weird nymph. The eyes just, the way the makeup is done, it looks really good on camera, I think. Uh, almost like the fairies from Zelda this kind of like big eye mysticism. We can see as well with the leg that we've got a dark ballet slipper with the strings tied around. Bambi used to be a ballet dancer. I believe that they stopped because they had a knee injury when they were in their teens. So I love that reference to their history. Yeah, overall this like, this is absolutely incredible for Ireland. You know, you look at our rehearsals last year, which were absolute crap. It was basically gold and then it was all about Connor's camel toe and this year we've got this beautiful deluxification just the detail now looking in everything the hair the makeup the dress look how intricate the dress is the dancer that she's got on stage with with them where they've got this kind of like muddied dark energy kind of spread on on his body he's got these great postures with his fingers and he's got these long nails it seems like the main theme of the staging is being in this candle circle they're going to do the hex on the dancer and the dancer is going to come to life Really, really cool storytelling. I think that's super, super fun. I wonder, are they gonna be confined to this candle circle or is there gonna be movement allowed? Uh, I wonder, is there like a little door or I believe the candles are gonna come up at the end. From the TikTok video, we can see there's a little bit of magic as they move their hand around and the candles light up. So not, actually, this TikTok was one of the shorter ones, I believe it was only 30 seconds long all the others were kind of a minute so a lot less information given about how this staging is going to progress i believe that there's going to be something on the back screen saying crying the witch which i think is a fun reference to what was happening during your song the national final this year but i love the playful of this this image now where bambi's got their hand wrapped around and the dancer i love the dancer's handography <laughs> it looks really 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 cool just giving this kind of de detached surreal like he's in a trance or something so again tying in with this hex this magical mystery feel this feels super fun and immersive creative theatrical in Bambi's intro on the TikTok they're saying that they can't wait for people to see their art and I'm getting art from this I'm getting so many different things in terms of the movement and the look it's just really really exciting compared to what we've previously sent where didn't feel like total complete cohesive packages whereas this feels like an artist who's got visual and sonic and lots of different talents and we're seeing it come together in this really cool exciting piece of package i think i think the inclusion of the dancer is really really excellent like it, it, this totally works for me and i'm glad that bambi's not on the stage on their own a little bit sad that we don't get the costumes from the national final because i thought they looked absolutely and utterly amazing they were some of my favorite costumes i would have liked maybe if like three other dancers have run on in the end and been like evil spirits outside the candles or something like that but overall i'm really happy with this and this got a really good reception on Twitter and you know Twitter is not exactly the place that you go to for a good reception so I feel much much more sure I'd probably put this up to a likely yes qualifier now the reason I'm not putting it as a definite yes is because you know it's very early in the running order it's fourth song is a little bit divisive and just our qualification record is just like 
pretty bad for non-qualifications in a row, but I definitely think this deserves to be in the final. Okay, fifth up, we have Jerry Heil and Aliona Aliona singing Teresa and Maria for Ukraine. Big switch up here now as well. I was talking earlier about how Lithuania's largely copied and pasted their staging with a bit of an upgrade. Ukraine staging looks quite different here now. This, this color palette is more of these kind of warm, is much, much more metallic. Jerry Heil's got this beautiful kind of Joan of Arc styling with arbor on her sleeve, beige gold dress, very simple hair. I really, really, really like this styling. I think, I think it looks absolutely stunning. And then it seems that Aliona, Aliona has this more like samurai knight feel because she's got this hair which almost feels like it's done in a Japanese, an old Japanese style. And then in the close-up picture of her, you can see it looks like chainmail that she's got on. So I love this kind of impression of a female warrior. This first image is absolutely wow. This is a stunning image of the two of them lying on the ground looking up. I'm guessing this is probably the start of the song where Jerry does her beautiful intro. And I like that both of them are on the stage and the the floor looks incredible and this reflection of them and then looking up at the sky almost like with this sunlight, moonlight on their faces. It's so pretty. This is what I'm saying about Ukraine just being absolutely incredible with staging because this, there's no props or anything here. This is just fashion and lighting, you know, cario, well, simple cario, but in terms of lying down, but uh, really, really, really effective. It does look like Jerry's gonna walk up a rock at some point. I wonder, could that like tiny bit clash with Serbia, who's also got a bit with a rock? I, you know, I just want Ukraine and Serbia to be like differentiated enough. But I think that there is because this has got the rap and it's got the kind of like more warrior feel. It feels a little bit more Game of Thrones where Serbia's a little bit more Lord of the Rings. It looks like Aliona's rap, we're gonna go into these kind of like silvers and blues and it looks like Jerry's off stage for that. So maybe she's gonna go up onto the top of the rock and be darkened out and Aliona Aliona is gonna do her thing on her own. So kind of giving them both a moment to shine. Overall, these pictures look really, really sharp deluxe. I love their styling so much. These are probably my favorite costumes so far. Beautiful lighting as well and this metallic color palette is fantastic. I can't think of anyone who's done that recently. Really, really clever. And then in regards to the TikTok, actually I just watched it again and that bit when they're lying down is actually the ending which is even more impactful because it's going to be the last thing that people see. So beautiful ending to the song. It does look like Jerry's going to have a bit of a cloak on at the start which he's going to throw off. They're going to interact in the middle. Aliona's going to come to the front and do a rap and then they're going to finish on the floor together. So yeah, really cool. There's movement in it. There's a bit of a storyline going on. This looks absolutely divine. Really, really expensive. Ukraine are definitely qualifying again. Okay, next up, it's Luna singing The Tower for Poland. Now, this was definitely the most divisive rehearsal that we had yesterday. Most people weren't mad about it. I absolutely love this. This is totally up my alley. Some gorgeous imagery here with this theme of chess pieces, a black rook and a white rook, and then her in between and the red. This opening image is so pretty of the, the two sides and her stuck in the middle in the red. It appears she's gonna start off in this kind of very dramatic pointed shouldered red vinyl dress really camp, really over the top. This is so entertaining. I, I think a lot of people think this is kind of a bit too goofy, a bit too a bit too camp. And I get that, but that's actually one of the reasons that I like it, I enjoy it. I think the song is quite safe. So I like that they're taking a little bit more risk and going for something bigger in the staging. And maybe that's one of the ways that they're giving her so, some artistic freedom. I believe she wanted to send a different song, but a record company wanted her to send The Tower. So maybe they said, okay, but we'll let you stretch things a little bit in terms of the visual package. I thought the visual package in the music video looked great. And this looks, I think this looks really cool and edgy. This is one of the ones that I got the most excited about. We've got three dancers in white, red, and black who are kind of like completely covered lycra dancers who she's gonna be interacting with. I love this thread of a black, white, red color palette. I think that's something that really pops. Her styling is cool, these big red boots. She's got these bizarre red spikes on her shoulder giving me a little bit of Lady Gaga. I love it, it's edgy, it's weird. We can see her again here with the white dancer. It looks like the car is gonna be kind of big and spooky. And then the key part appears that she's gonna go up into the tower and then we've got the red Lycra person and her at the top of the black and the white towers. Some people are saying that they think this looks like the Finnish national final Vox Populi. Keep in mind that 0.001% of people watching the semi-final are actually gonna know about it. Finland are in the semi-final, so maybe they'll watch it and go, this looks like Vox Populi, but 
I, I really don't think that they're going to care. And you know, this chess theme was in the music video as well. I think someone actually did an analysis of the chess moves on Twitter, and apparently a lot of them were quite bad. This final image of the of her at the top of the towers with the red lycra person. I think it's very striking. I just think people are going to remember this, and that's one of the first tasks that you have to do in Eurovision is be remembered. If people don't remember you, they're not even going to consider voting for you. And I think the song is very pleasant. It's kind of safe. I think having an, a more edgy look is good. I think it's necessary for the song. I think actually I quite like this. Are we going to get some on-screen effects that we've seen from Poland in the last couple of years? Maybe there's going to be something like that. This is what I wanted from Brooke when Brooke sang her song Checkmate a couple of years ago for Malta in their national final. I wanted this kind of like fun chess imagery. I'm a big fan of chess. I just finished watching the candidates tournament which happened so I like seeing chess in Eurovision. It's, this, this does look goofy. I'm not saying this isn't goofy. I'm saying I like the goofiness of it. Uh, in terms of the takeoff video, it looks like she's got good confidence. She's walking around really well. Like this is being very well rehearsed and well choreographed. So I'm excited. This makes me feel a little bit more confident about Poland. But then also the kind of negative reaction from the fans is balancing that a little bit. But then again, you know, everyone was so negative about Blanca last year and also negative about Aquaman and their effects. And both those songs end up doing pretty well. So I would say the negative fan reaction is necessarily a death knell or anything like that. Okay, last but definitely not least, it's Baby Lasagna singing Rim Tim Taggy Dim for Croatia. Now, these photos got me really, really, really excited. I've been saying in my odds videos, what do Croatia need to do? What are the barriers to them winning? And for me, the big thing was, how was HRT going to be able to manage this pressure? Were they going to be able to deluxify and elevate the song? Would they be able to bring an amazing show? For me, these photos look like the answer is yes. These look so super expensive. This first picture, this detail in the eye, I love I love, 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 love this outfit. We've got this traditional sleeve. I think it's the Iorastrian coast. Someone correct me down below because I can't find the name of it. I think it's a region in Croatia where they have these big white sleeves. Beautiful detail in this. This looks like it's been handmade. And then this red jacket, which we saw in the music video, but it's like super deluxified. We've got these gorgeous, it looks like hand stitched flowers going the whole way down. Just like real massive amount of effort put in. Really reminded me of Chanel slow-mo. The detail that she had in her outfit was incredible as well. So this like even this one picture alone, this is like Croatia coming for the win. They know that you don't get that an opportunity that often. Basically, unless you're Ukraine, Italy, or Sweden, you very rarely get an opportunity to win Eurovision. Like Croatia have been in it since the 90s, and this is the first time that they really, really have a shot to win. So they're not wasting this opportunity. I'm so relieved to see it. The second picture here now, we can see that the dancers have had a glow up as well. They've also got this beautiful upgrade in their costumes. Look at the female dancer's legs. She's got the same kind of floral patterns in a different color. Incredible details gonna pop on screen. It just makes it look more professional and more deluxe, which is really gonna help with the juries. If juries see this, anyone who's thinking, oh, is this a little bit jokey or whatever, they're gonna see this like effort that's being put in. When you see like meticulously done details, everything really well organized, choreographed perfectly. You know it's not a joke. You know this person is, is showing you their art, which just happens to have a little bit of humor in it. Third picture now, we can see he's got this like uh, slightly silver slicked back hair again. Brilliant, I love it. Just so many great choices here. And we've seen that Baby Lasagna's performance ability has been going up and up and up as been, he's been doing more shows. This picture here, I believe is the start because you can see at the bottom, you can see his legs. So I think this is when he's walking onto the stage, but even this, just look at the detail in the costumes, all these little extra things, the cloth at the top of the guitars, the way that they're synchronized in their leg lifts. It just looks really deluxe. This is fantastic. I'm so happy. And I do feel like Croatia needs to just work on their jury score a little bit. And I think that this does that. I think this will be respected by the jury. Now, one thing I'll say is I'm not mad on his trousers. Again, I wish they had a little bit more detail or it just looks a little bit too inexpensive compared to everything else. You even see the male dancer, he's got the ribbon tied around his leg. And the female dancer's got this beautiful design on hers. Maybe this isn't the final pants, but yeah, I would like the pants to kind of look as deluxe as everything else because they just kind of look the most basic out of everything there. But that's kind of nitpicking and maybe the camera's just not going to be in his pants. Maybe that's why. Another thing that gives me a lot of confidence is just seeing this pyro. Pyro is expensive. So in case you don't know how it works, when you go to Eurovision, they give you like the shopping list of things that you can buy. You can buy pyro, you can buy like uh, fireworks, wheels, you can buy smoke and all these different, you, know, you can have the raining 
thing that Emily DeForest had at the end of her song. And there's basically a cost for each one. And it's really expensive. <laughs> I can't remember, I did a Eurovision news update about it last year where this like shopping list was released and you could see all the prices, but Croatia paid for it. Again, really just realizing that this is their chance to win. I believe that he's being sponsored by the city of Umag right now. If you're Croatian, tell me what's going on with that because does that kind of imply that if he wins that Umag will want to host? Is there like a little bit of an under thing going there or is it still going to be Zagreb if Croatia wins? It's a good thing that I'm talking about Croatia winning though. This really does, is giving me winner vibes in terms of the visuals. Now obviously we need to see how it moves, we need to see how he sings, how does it all come together. This last image of the smoke guns going up, again, they need to pay for this. This is expensive. It looks fantastic though, all in the white. Really beautiful, absolutely stunning. In terms of the TikTok video, that's the bit where we get to see some of these neon animals. Animals. It looks largely the same as Dora. To be honest, I thought the neon animals, animals looked awesome. They were ready to go. So yeah, they don't need to change that at all. And, they've, and then the dancing bit, it looks like there's gonna be some red and green lighting. I was hoping for something a tiny bit more there, but maybe it's gonna come with the camera angles. Maybe they're gonna bring someone on stage to go up close to them. I'm not sure. Maybe they're holding a couple of their cards close to their chest. One thing I noted in the TikTok video, which I'm really, really happy about, I spoke about in his door performances about how he had to come to the center for a mark where the three of them do this kind of like wavy motion. And you could see him kind of like looking for where his mark was and it really just broke up the immersiveness of the performance. They fixed that now. He just has, needs to stay in place. He sings downwards so he can look to see that he's in the right place. Really, really clever because it means he doesn't have to look at the ground. It's part of the performance as he sings down and then the two dancers come to him. Really, really small detail, but it's stuff like that which just, uh, it's just thoughtfulness, it's preparation. I really, really like that. I was so relieved to see that. That was one of my biggest pet peeves from the national final performance and it's fixed now. In the build up to the final course, we can see some of this pyro coming in. This looks like a winner's performance. Absolutely, definitely. We need to see what it looks and sounds like on TV, but so far they've passed the first hurdle. There's a couple more hurdles coming up. Some of those hurdles are called Nemo and uh, Angelina Mango, but the first hurdle has been crossed, so that's very much a relief. Okay, so quick overview of all seven songs. Who's my winner? Croatia was my winner. Absolutely fantastic. And I think maintaining their status as one of the contenders to win. I also loved Ireland. Part of that is just that we tend to have slightly low expectations for Ireland. So seeing us do so well is like this kind of like joyous surprise. I'm so excited this year. And even if for some reason Bambi doesn't qualify, I'm so happy with this entry. And I really do feel like Eurosong next year will be much, much better but I think this deserves to qualify. It's got beautiful artistry in it. It looks so meticulous and really fantastic. Ukraine upgrading their staging as they always do. I love this change up in the styling to go towards these metallics and this kind of like warrior outfits. Really, really pretty. I really enjoyed Luna. <laughs> I really enjoyed Luna. I understand that it's kind of wacky, but I enjoy that stuff. Getting some Queen of Hearts chess tournament vibes. I'm really into it. Lithuania looking gorgeous as well. Just not having as much impact because it's stuff that we've seen before. But keep in mind, people watching the show, it'll be the first time they've seen it and they're going to be wowed. A little bit underwhelmed with Cyprus, but we need to see what the cario looks like. And again, I don't think I'm the target demographic for Cyprus. I think maybe they're going for a younger age group anyway. So, and finally, Serbia, really beautiful and mystical. To be honest, I've got pretty positive things to say about everyone today. And I think that's a testament to the fact that this first half of the first semi-final I think is the strongest quarter out of all four. I don't think all the rehearsal days are going to go this well. I think it's just more testament to the strength of this quarters. This still makes me think of that we're going to have more qualifiers from the first half than the second half this year. Okay, so what did you think about day one of rehearsals at Eurovision 2024? Leave me a comment in the comment section down below. Thank you so much to ESC Heb for supporting me on Buy Me Coffee. If you want to support the channel, I'll leave links to you in the description down below. And of course, thank you to my patrons for patronizing me from all around the world. If you want to join my Patreon, I'll leave a link just in the description down below as well. But of course, thanks so much just for watching and maybe leaving a like and maybe sharing the video. And thanks so much for watching. See you in another Eurovision and I'll see this video very soon. Goodbye. Blah, 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 blah.